With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino. With cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I have been here. The Grey Goose. Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. My recent interview with Inspector Ford tells me the game is up. He's quite aware that I, Roland Fletcher, am the Grey Goose. His trouble is that he has no shred of actual proof but he may light on it at any moment. So the operation order is, I think, disappear. Incidentally, he's tumbled Charlie Austin, and now I find my old crony with a constable at both front and back door. Getting a hunch, I'm about to send Barbara around in my car when there's a ring on her bell, followed by the voice of Inspector Ford asking to be admitted. Using the old hole-in-the-wall bookcase, I vanish into my own flat, turn on the speaker, and listen. But do come in, Inspector Ford. Thank you. <coughs> I, I should tell you, Miss Faversham, that my call is, in a way, or shall I say, partly official. Really? <laughs> what have I done? But don't treat the subject that way, please. Fact is, we feel you can help us. Us? I mean, the answers by you to a few questions might assist the course of justice. Oh. <coughs> You're not very cooperative at the moment. I'll try to do better when you become more explicit, Inspector. Oh, quite, quite. Mm. Well, as you know, the High Judiciary have now ordered a retrial of... um... My father. Yes. Thank heaven. An active agent, among other factors, has apparently been remotely connected with establishing certain facts that have caused the authorities to reopen the case. You mean this grey goose, who's hounded down the men responsible for my father's disgrace and imprisonment? Aren't you guilty of understatement when you say remotely? Please, don't let a very natural exaltation obscure the fact that while achieving this object, your your grey goose has robbed, plundered and... um... And in some cases executed summary justice himself. Which is not his prerogative. The law, the whole structure of jurisprudence is constructed for that purpose. And being so potent, put my father in jail for 12 years. Give me the grey goose every time. Mm, You're very ardent. Naturally. Your police, your laws, your whole structure of jurisprudence, as you call it, made a huge mistake. Your grey goose has torn it apart, made it look what it is, a structure incredibly jerry-built. Well, I congratulate the grey goose on a very warm adherent, so I find I must change my tactics. Would you, should you meet this ephemeral character, express yourself to him as you just did? I'd go on my knees to thank him. Have you done so? What? Haven't you thanked your immediate neighbour, Roland Fetter? Inspector Ford, you have the reputation of being an astute man. Are you seriously suggesting that Roland Fletcher is the Grey Goose? I am. Prove it. That I shall do in the very near future. And it may be with your help. Never. Oh, yes, it may well be with your assistance. That's nonsense. I'd never give it. You may have to, willingly or under oath as evidence. Good night, Miss Havisham. Phew. My heavens. Yes, you heard? Yes, I heard. Apparently Inspector Ford has let loose the dogs of war all right. Sit tight, I'm coming in. He knows, Rowley. Definitely. But, my dear, he has no iota of proof, and he knows it. 
However, getting you and Charlie Austin into a witness box might shove a real spanner into my works. I wouldn't say a thing. <laughs> in the hands of an expert barrister, my dear, you'd be bound to drop a brick. So would Charlie Austin. Now, for the moment, the arrangements we made hold. Get into your disguise, wig, moustache and clothes. Get round to Charlie Austin's. Try and knock him up. He knows not to answer the door. Then I give up. Where do I go then? You, that is me, uh, get back here in my car, go into my flat, relax and have a cigarette near the window. And what are you doing all this time? <laughs> I once more become old man Herbert Jenkins and leave here through your main entrance and thence to Charlie's place, the best way I can. Now off with you and get change while I do ditto. I'll try and get Charlie back here. He'll be safer. <laughs> Heavens, he left the back window open. Charlie! Hello! Where are you? On your windowsill. That you, Mr. Hex? No other. Stand clear. I'm coming in. Blimey. What's the whiskers you made of? I, tonight, am old Mr. Jenkins. Lessee of the flat Miss Favisham occupies. Now, look here, old son. The cops are back in front of your place. Uh, don't I know it? Did anyone come? There was a knock on the door a few minutes ago, but uh, I obeyed orders and didn't answer. Ah, that was good. As far as the cops out in the street were concerned, that was me calling on you. Now they think that I gave up and drove away, but it was actually Barbara doing her impersonation act. Now, thinking you're out, they're waiting for your return. Pretty smart, too. But how did you get here? <laughs> did a shin up a drain pipe a dozen houses down the street onto the roof. Oh, crock, you might have broken your neck. Well, I didn't. And how'd you, uh, get a bit onto my windowsill? I didn't. I hitched my old piano wire around a chimney pot and lowered myself down. Uh, well, now what happens? We get out from under their noses. <laughs> how? I go back onto the roof, leave my wire attached to you, then I haul you up. Oh, crikey, that wire stunt again. It puts the wind up me. I'm sorry, there's no alternative. Charlie, my boy, you've got to disappear. Ben Ford is going to pull you in and grill you. I wouldn't say a word. I know that. But he's a clever bloke, and we can't risk it. Charlie, it's ten years for some of the things we've pulled off. OK, then, let's get going. Bring a few souvenirs. I've got all that matters in my pockets. All right, then. I'm going back onto the roof. You hitch this wire around your waist. <coughs> so, now, <coughs> fasten the swivel. <coughs> right. I'll give you a call in about half a minute. OK, Charlie. Yes, OK. And for goodness sake, don't drop me. As soon as you get near enough, grab the gutter and heave yourself up. Right? <laughs> I suppose so. <sighs> Pull for the shore, boys. <clears throat> so far, so good. A pity these roofs are so steep. You're telling me. If ever I get back here, I'll get the builders to change it. Should have remembered to get you to change into rubber-soled shoes. Wait, I've got it. Take your shoes off. You'll be safer in socks. Oh, I only bought these shoes this week. <laughs> Tie the laces and hang the shoes round your neck. How far do we have to go on this blinking, slippery dip? I told you, about a dozen roofs down. A dozen? Oh, heaven forgive me for all the things I've done in the murky past. Now, oh, come on. Balance yourself. One short leg, one long one, like this. Follow as fast as you can. We haven't much time. How much further? Just another one to go. <laughs> and then? The piano wire. What, again? Yes, the only way. These are all solid roofs. There are no skylights to get through. OK. Well, I'll be glad to feel a flat pavement under my feet. By Jiminy. Here, what's that? Hold it. It's a big police car pulling up outside your place, Charlie. For crying out loud. Listen. All right, Ben. We break in back off front. Get busy. He doesn't believe you're out somehow, Charlie. Keep your head down. They've turned car lights onto your place. Think they'll spot us? No, I'm positive they won't. There's one thing about it. Those lights create deep shadows, and we're on the shadow side. Are we? There's another car pulled up at the back. There it is. They've tilted their lights. Oh, blimey. If we'd been five minutes later, we'd never have got here. You never said a truer word. All right. Now, lie flat against the roof and take a breather. I've got to get down from here in half a sec. 
Come on, hitch the wire around your waist again. <laughs> this makes my blood run cold. <laughs> It'll freeze in jail. Now, off you go. I'll play it out from my waist. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Down. Two men. Easy to the end of the lane to double. The third is apart, all right? Unhitch, Charlie. And run like the devil. You've only got a second to do. Meet later at Barbara's place. Careful. Get a move on. Whew. Just do it, I think. Yes, he's okay now. But what about myself? Better bide here for the moment. Hurry up, you men! Oh, well, confound right. it, they've hurried. So here I am, sitting in a gutter like a wretched pigeon. Right. Can't use the wire now. Is By the powers, I'm it? stuck. Then, laddie, you might possibly bring down a bird this night. Oh, dear. Lots of very unwelcome activity. Ah, Fletcher, unless you can think of something, you're... Bless my soul. There is a skylight in this roof. Well, well, well. May as well try it. Good. It opens. Well, they can't see me now, that's certain. I'll explore a bit. Ah, no one about. Carpenter's lock-up shop, apparently. Try the door. All right, our is in the street. Now, keep a sharp look out there. Well, I tell you what it is here. You look up the neighbors. Oh, you take that way. Much too unhealthy out there. Too much thought about. Oh, my gosh, my dear. Roland Fletcher, you're losing your punch. Ah, carpenter shop. Shavings. Wood. Ha. Dear, oh, deary me. Now, what could be better than a small conflagration? Nobody in the house to get hurt? It's a chance. Shavings, come here. You are more valuable than 10,000 goose feathers. That's it. Keep the home fires burning, my beauties. Up she goes. Now for the psychological moment. Excitement, panic. Burn, my little ones, burn. Constable, help! My shop's on fire! Where's the nearest fire plug? A hundred yards in a straight. Oh, thank you, thank you, baby! What's all this? Oh, confound this confusion! Absolutely wrecked my plans! Has anybody set an alarm? Yes, sir. Old gentleman just passed me on his way to the fire alarm post. What? You... You let someone out of this cordoned area? You, 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 you idiot! Extreme necessity demands extreme measures, a maxim obviously learned and acted upon by the Grey Goose.